So on May 10th, the biggest auroral storm in years hit the Earth and the northern and southern lights were seen in locations from London to Namibia. But a lot of people slept through it. They didn't know it was happening. I was lucky enough to see it. Well, I say lucky, but not really, because us aurora chasers knew it was coming. And in this video, I'm going to give you 10 tips to give you the maximum amount of notice so that you don't miss the next big auroral storm. And at the end of the video, I'll explain why that next big one might be quite soon. Firstly, auroras are caused by activity on the sun. So keep your eyes on the sun, not by looking at it, but by checking websites like spaceweather.com or solarham.com. The first sign of a really strong auroral storm is usually a solar flare, a sudden brightening of a region of the sun. But the flare itself doesn't generate an aurora, that's a myth. So our second thing to look for is does the solar flare lead to a CME or coronal mass ejection? This is an explosion of material from the upper atmosphere of the sun called the corona. There are other things that can cause strong auroras like a hole in the corona, but CMEs lead to the strongest lights. We usually find out if there's a CME resulting from the solar flare within a few hours. Thirdly, once we've confirmed there is a coronal mass ejection, we want to know if it's Earth directed or not. Many CMEs are not Earth directed. So on space weather websites, they'll start to give estimates of the CME's trajectory. And fourthly, we want to know how strong the flare was. Flares are given labels. So we get a letter, C is weak, M is medium, X is strong. And they're also given numbers. The higher the number, the better. Five, the duration of the flare is also important. A long duration flare is better than a short duration flare. Once we've got a forecast of a CME heading towards the Earth, we probably have about one to three days notice, depending on the speed of the CME. On the SolarHam website, I would check the thing that says detailed forecast. This will predict a number called the KP index, and that's our sixth thing to watch for. This one is really key. It's a measure of the strength of the aurora. So if we see KP5, that's classed as a G1 geomagnetic storm. And for us aurora chasers, that's usually the minimum to get us excited. The storm that hit on May 10th was KP9, or a G5 severe geomagnetic storm. However, KP values are an average over a three hour period across the world. A more accurate measure for your location is the strength of the magnetic field this is measured in nano Tesla or NT. The more negative, the better. On May 10th, 11th, it reached minus 412. Seven, once you know the timing of the storm, you'll want to check the terrestrial weather. The cloudier it is, the less you're going to see. You'll also want to get out of the city lights because they can drown out the auroras. The darker the sky, the better. Hey, there's one component that can throw a spanner in the works, and that's the direction of the magnetic field of the stuff coming from the sun. The Earth's magnetic field points north, so we want this stuff to be pointing south, but it can fluctuate over minutes or hours. So on live apps, check something called BZ or BZ if you're American. We want this to be pointing south or to have a very negative number, but it's hard to forecast, so you often have to wait for the satellite to actually measure it. The more negative the number or the more south, the better. That's the key thing. Nine, auroras are a nighttime activity, so check how long your night is at your location. Places like Scandinavia are great for chasing the auroras in the winter, but obviously not good during the summer, as there's very few or maybe no hours of darkness there. The storms usually happen between 8 p.m. and 2 a.m., although on rare occasions they can occur outside of that time. Tenth and last, you should know there is an 11 year cycle of activity on the sun. And this cycle looks to be much stronger than predicted. And we think the peak is probably going to be this year or next year. No one knows for sure until after the peak. Uh, but that's why this is a particularly good time to be chasing auroral storms. In fact, just as I was about to release this video, a major X3 flare went off that did lead to a CME. It's not likely Earth directed, but this is from the old sunspot that caused the May 10th severe storm. And it'll be facing Earth in the coming week. Now, one thing that's interesting though, is that the strongest storms uh, often occur just after the peak. That's what happened in the last cycle anyway. Now, space weather forecasts are just like terrestrial weather forecasts. They're accurate, 
but not perfectly so. My best guess is that when they predict a strong storm, it's right about seven or eight times out of 10. Um, but it's all you've got to go on. Now, uh, phone apps you can check are Space Weather Live or the Glendale app. So that's 10 tips that should give you the most lead time to chase that auroral storm, to head out to that dark sky and see a spectacular show over your head. A really, really strong Northern Lights display is something that I think you'll never forget.